so I'm gonna try to do this ombre right here. I'm using my 10 brush. And also I'm using my monomer. Uh, monomers are out of stock. I'm so sorry. During Labor Day sale, everybody wanted monomer. And they pretty much took it all. So this is the 181, not 182 by Chisel. I really like this new because it's kind of like almost like a, but as you can see, my monomer makes it just nice and medium consistency. The reason why I'm using a smaller brush is you guys see that her nail bed is a little bit smaller. So a 10 brush would just be perfect. So you get that perfect mono acrylic. Just like that. I'm gonna try this ombre real quick, see if it looks good. I'm pretty sure it will. I'm doing like a nude on nude, kind of dark to light. So I have a lighter nude over here. Let me test this ombre. Make sure I get it nice and shaped. These are my um, triple XL coffin non C curve tips. So when I cut them down, the probably I'll pretty almost cut almost half the length. It turns to a nice taper. Oh yeah, this nude on nude is gonna be look so nice. Only time you ever do nude on nude ombres is when fall time comes. You might not see it as much, but it's there. See that? Nude on nudes actually very, very popular. As long as you pick the right nudes though. You wanna at least slightly see it. Get the cable nice and even. That's with a top coat or a mat, you'll be able to see that. So the ombre works. I can't use this. You know what? I, I really like this glitter. It goes so well with this, look at this. Can I raise it right over there? Yeah, make sure I have a razor. I gotta cut this powder here. I'm gonna do a half glitter now. I will have to encapsulate this. So I'm gonna use an X-Acto knife. You can use anything with a straight edge. If you have an X-Acto knife, please be careful because it is sharp. And I'm going to cut half of this vertically. And the other half, I'll fill it with a nice glitter to match. Make sure it's nice and crisp. Get the excess so that you can see it pops out. Just gonna brush it clean up any excess here. I'm not gonna put the glitter in yet. I'm gonna put that in last because I don't want to contaminate my powder. Got a little missing spot up here, so I'm gonna put a little bit of powder here. And for the middle finger, I'm gonna do a glitter to ombre. First, I'm gonna get a little bit of clear powder. I shall do it right now, might as well. Put a little bit of clear in here. Just a thin piece, 
glitter just so it could stick my glitter. And this is a variation of glitters. It's not all chunky. It's like a small, big. Did I have this for sale in the class? Mm -hmm. And yeah. The set. Yeah, the set. It's a small, big flakes and stuff like that. So it's not one dimensional. I don't like using glitter. It's just all fat glitters. I like using glitters. To, oh, I'm out of focus. I like using glitter that's actually um, different shapes and sizes and stuff like that, and a different shine really adds to it. So later I'm going to encapsulate all this underneath with clear. But the clear that I put in the bottom helps keep the glitter in place. So when I do encapsulate, it's not going to move all over the place. The reason why I prefer to do this last is because you might, if you don't clean it properly, you can con con contaminate your monomer and your brush and you might get it onto the nudes and stuff like that. And I don't really like that. So that's why I got to be very careful and make sure you clean your brush very good. like that uh, it's 181 sorry it's 181 I'm sorry I put it wrong in the caption I'll probably change it later it's 181 this one I'm gonna do a glitter ombre so I'm not gonna cancel it. 181 you can get chisel pretty much anywhere. I'm gonna lay the glitter first, let it dry, then I'm gonna ombre right over it. The reason why I don't like mixing this glitter with clear first, clear powder, and use it as a powder is because if you mix this with, uh, if you mix glitter with clear, what's gonna happen is, um, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. What's gonna happen is um, you, the glitter might be like sideways and it's not flat, so when you drill into it, it actually drills into the glitter and takes away from the color. So I'm gonna leave this right here because I'm gonna ombre over this. For this one, I'm gonna do a nice powder marble. darker nude to give me some depth here yeah, because these two nudes are really close together. So I'm gonna encapsulate all this later too. Let's get my marble in there. It should be dry enough for me to ombre.
Oop. That's why. That's why you gotta be careful with. Yeah, see how the glitter just went all over there? I gotta be careful with that. In hindsight, I should have put a clear coat over the glitter too. Once I put it on there, but it's okay. I'm just gonna be very careful with this ombre, make sure I get it nice and smooth. There we go. I'll cap all that with clear later. one is an ombre Ooh, I gotta be careful paper towel is full of glitter so I don't want to bring any glitter on this I want this nice and solid so that's why I went if you in hindsight like I said earlier I don't know why I didn't do it um, when you work because I can't I probably pretty much just want to show you guys if when you're working with um, glitters make sure you do that last after you've done all your ombres all your solid colors do it last because you don't want to contaminate your monomer and also the, the nails and stuff like that it's, it runs the issue all the time so at least when you're doing your glitter last, that's it, you're done. You don't have to work with any other powder. Makes your life a lot easier. I gotta be very careful because when I get some glitter on this, it's not gonna look good. I don't want glitter on this, I just want a nice ombre. I like that ombre. Yeah, look at that. It's so nice. Okay, let's just go finish this off with a clear. Got some plans for this spot or later. You guys will see. I put some um, caviar beads on there, caviar crystals, the clear ones, and it'll give it like a rock look. It's gonna look pretty, pretty damn good. Take your time with the clear. I don't know how clear is terrible to work with. That's why we have to do the powder marble very thin because we got to put clear over it. And that's where you put your structure, apex, or if you need it with the clear. You don't try to do it with the colored powder because if you do that too thick and you have to do a clear over it, it'll just get thicker. So it's easier just to do it with the clear. Caps like this too. I'm gonna start way up where the apex area is because I have a lot of me nude up there already. I don't need any more thickness in the cuticle area. I do need thickness towards my tip because that's all glitter right there. And the glitter should be nice and set.
Very important when you do this clear you got to make sure the structure is the way you want it work slow with clear and also this one this one's gonna be pretty so I decide if I want to do matte or not nah this is gonna be, have to be a shiny set Matter will look good, but be careful with this clear because sometimes it can bubble. We don't want that. What causes the bubble? Uh, bubbling is basically if you try to work too fast with it, like too much tapping and movement, it causes it to bubble. And also, um, bubbling can come from the monomer being too dirty okay. and contamination of the monomer. So if you say I've had a let's say I've had a bunch of nudes and all that stuff in there, of course the clear is going to reflect what the monomer is going to bring up, and that will cause the, the liquid to be not as clean, and then they'll bubble up. Very common issue a lot of people have with bubbling. Um, people think it's just the. I just recommend. Be careful if you see your monomers not, you see your monomers contaminated, you can know, you know when your monomers contaminated. It gets sticky, it is the big discoloration. Um, generally, what happens when that's happening is because you're not being careful cleaning your brush when you're going into your monomer source. Uh, let me zoom out. What two news are those babies? <laughs> Um, I'm using a 181 from, um, I'm going to cap my nude from, uh, my ombre. I'm using 181 and, uh, one, the other, the more orange one is the, this one is 208, but I'm, I'll use that for the powder marbling. Just give it a little more contrast. This one, just give it a little more contrast because I'm doing two nudes. And the other one, this one is... 71 lighter nude um you can use a um om 15b by um, chisel it's really good too i like om 15b it's like a pink a cover pink chisel has a lot of good nudes right now i'm just going to clear cap lightly the uh, ombre just in case that whenever I, later when i drill onto it i'm not gonna get too much that's it i'll finish with one hand guys i gotta add a little bit more more designs later on give it a little more oomph but um, that's one hand down. Pretty much just like a powder set. So, happy with it. Then we gotta rinse and repeat. For those that missed the... I'm going to do the ombre first. I'm just gonna start the ombre nails first. I'm gonna do my glitter last. Okay, learn my lesson. Do my glitter last. So anything I gotta do with the powder, I'll do it first. by now this has a this tips have a slight c curve to it but not too crazy it's the non c curve they say non c curve is to mean that it still has a slight c curve which is not curved like the other c curves as you see 10 brush works perfectly for what i'm trying to do here in this set you don't really want like everything i did in this set you guys can tell you really don't want to use a big big brush i mean a big brush Yeah, you guys think they're pretty now until the top coat hits. That's what. Oop, I did not get enough powder there. It's okay. 
looking like a weird position right now. I'm like at a weird angle, the way my camera's pointed. That's why I'm kind of comfortable working. You guys notice I'm always swiping those sides. I don't, I want the shape to be there ready for me. Less work for me later. Okay, so I'm gonna do my half powder. I'm gonna try to use the rest of this monomer for this set if I had this and try not to switch out. And to cut this, you gotta wait until it dries a little bit. You don't wanna cut it too early. When you cut it wet, it won't have that nice crisp. I want a nice crisp line. Not really, because later I'm gonna put a nice gel gold through it. Use my X-Acto knife again. I'm gonna clean the edge. So I can get a nice cut. variety of things you can use for this. Oh my, Michelle gonna get her nail done too or just her mom? I literally just said I was gonna do that last. <laughs> and look at me. Might as well, I already put the clear on, so. But I'm pretty much done with everything. Everything's gonna be glitter anyways. Just gonna fill it in right to the point there. I don't wanna do too much. That's gonna look so good later on, but that taco hits. Of course, the middle finger is the ombre glitter. Okay, so I'm doing this the, the correct way. Watch this, okay? Put my clear, very thin. Take my glitter. Feel it nice and even. I want a full solid nail. Let that dry first before I do anything else. Do my uh, marble.
Just throw a little bit of clear here. Okay, back to this finger. Before I do my ombre, I'm gonna take clear, very thin. And just coat it. Because when I drag my ombre, I want a nice smooth surface. Like how earlier, my glitter just kind of went with it. Now it should be sealed then. When I let that dry, I'm gonna go and encapsulate these nails. Oh, actually no. I'm gonna finish up my ombre. đi đâu chơi vậy? hả? Đi nhậu hả? Ngày nào muốn đi nhậu hả? September đúng rồi. Every year. Okay. Let's cap it. Oh no. She touched something. Mày mướn về nhiều cho đám cưới rồi hả? Chưa À, chưa mướn Clear Mướn cái đó khoảng 5 ngàn 5 ngàn đôi kim á Nhiều Hồi mấy... 10... À, dạ 11 ngàn 11 ngàn hả? Là em đi tính Dạ I know. Because... Trust me, I know. Huh? You know how much my venue was? 11,000. Mm -hmm. About that. So now I do my ombre. You gotta rent a hall, not a ballroom. You want it cheaper. Ooh, I might just have. Did you have some clear touch on this? Enough now. I need more monomer. I need fresh monomer. Huh? Cow. I'm like a I'm like this actually is very easy because you're all doing is you're doing acrylic work. The design's all done in acrylic. Later on, you add a little few designs here and there just to touch up and, you know, bring out the design. But in that sense, it's actually very, very simple. As long as you work with acrylic, you should be finished within the hour. I, I, was like, I think I said like this, take about an hour. As long as you focus on your acrylic work. Sorry, I haven't been paying attention to the comments at all. Um, the acrylic color is 181 by Chisel. It's like almost like a terracotta nude. I like it, it's like fall. I put in the caption 182 by accident, so I'm sorry. It's 181. If you look through Chisel's um, color wheel or whatever, there's a lot of colors they have, very pretty. Have a lot of pretty nudes. 
Where's I gonna protect this ombre? I let the clear sit for a little bit. I'm not gonna force it through. Just remember when you're doing your clear, you still gotta shape the nail. Don't forget, don't forget the shape. And my last finger and I'll finish. Now this one I have to cap all the way up because this the whole nail is really thin instead of powder marbling. Quick shaping, hand file, a drill, we're good to go. I gotta clean my brush. I really recommend uh, Chisel's 170 to 180s in their news and nudie pinks. Um, also, their uh, one OM fifteen B is like their like my favorite pink from them. There you go. That was a size ten brush that I used, guys. Okay. And I'm gonna dump the rest of this monomer because I don't really don't need it. Show you some of the colors I used. This one is actually something I mixed, so don't look at this one. But this is the main color I used right here. That's the new everybody wanted to see. 181, okay, not 182. And I threw this in there, a little bit more orangey for the, my powder marbling. So now just a quick shaping. We really don't need to do that much shaping because the shape should be already there. Just mm. side to side. Get my shape done. I just can you scoot out a little bit. There you go. Oh, okay. That's what's wrong. You too close. Oh. I felt like. too close. Your shape should already be there with the tips. That's why when I was doing my application, I was smooth and not really nice. So you shouldn't have any problems with that. that big of an apex just using their natural nail ba base for my apex build my foundation 
I don't want too much of a bulge because it's a flat nail. It's a straight tip. When you file like that, sit like this, how you do an iPad text that just needs clear to fill versus, oh, when you fill nails like this. Um, you guys see how when I use, when, I, when you fill this, you I would rather you use the nude, the main nude that you used. You know, it's, which is either the light new where you do the ombre with, that's how you, you fill it. And that's if the plant still wants to keep the same design. You wouldn't use clear because the clear will show through. You want to use the nude, the base nude. You always have a base nude. But look at that, guys. Nice and shaped already. See that? Easy money, right? Yeah, filling, you gotta use the base nude. I was like, I need cover nude. Hey, sorry, how are you? Mm. Color powder sets, usually my clients, they never fill in the color powder sets unless they're using, um, unless I'm doing like art and I'm like just using a, uh, uh, like a, a cover powder, like a cover pink, cover nude. That I just fill it and I just do my art design over top of it. But if I'm doing a full design like this, encapsulate all this stuff, the client knows when they come back, they're probably more likely, if they want to change the design, they're going to definitely have to change it up a little bit. And it's not something they're going to be with. You touched, oh my God, you touched something. What are you touching down there? Oh no, I have to put some more clear on here. Touch something. Stab the clear. Yikes. No cry. No cry. You the plant from hell. Uh, right now. Okay. Definitely not gonna get another point. <laughs> <laughs> clear there. Oh, my, my, my stuff, my class in Cincinnati this weekend. Yeah, like I said, clients that get full encapsulation, glitter, all this stuff, and then they come back and they want like, oh, can I get a nude set or a French set with like totally different colors? That ain't gonna happen. And I ain't damn well not gonna drill down the nail. So the year better soak it up and do a new set because I'm not putting all that gunk over making layers and layers of nails. It's not a god stopper. Whenever I get a client that's maybe new to my table and they've done where they went to places where they drill down and try to put acrylic over it. If you do a good drill off, that's great. But a lot of people are lazy. They don't do good drill offs. As in I can see layers and layers of what the previous nails is and it's thicker in certain areas because they didn't drill off enough and it's just it just it just feels half ass to me so i'd rather just soak off and just do a press set and have it look really nice so at the end of the day when they, she leaves my table it has to look good and i cannot work like that when i know there's like layers and layers of other people's product underneath there that's why they, you know sometimes you gotta educate your clients let them know that they have to do a new set if they want to change the design you're not gonna sit there for 30 40 minutes drilling off all this powder so i make your nails last and they last a month and the clank wear the nails for a month they soak off they feel like they got a month their money's worth i think the cost of, so of drilling and and filling uh, over that is gonna be just as much as soaking off because a lot of guys don't like soak off because you guys it takes you guys too long there's a lot of techniques to do with soak offs that will speed up the process. I even consider having like a soak off kit that you can make and sell to your clients and and show them how to do it. <laughs> I might do that. I might I might, I might have a, a soak off kit with instructions and you guys just buy it, give it to your clients and have them pay for it. It's like here, if you need to soak your nails off, that's what you do. At least I can get most of it off, if not all of it off. It'll save you a lot of time, huh? That's actually a good idea. A soak off kit. 
difficulty. No, it's it's pretty basic. You give them like a buffer filer. Well, yeah, the file. And we're going to hand file just real quick, smooth out all the surfaces. You already have them? Good. It's, a, it's good to have them for your clients already. Have them pair them to soak the nails off for them to come in to you. They can sit there and watch a whole you know, a couple episodes of Netflix at home save you 30, 40 minutes in the shop, in the studio, right? I can't wait until my filers are back. These files are not cutting it, man. <laughs> Gotta restock my filers. Use extra arm strength. Huh? Gotta use extra arm strength, huh? No, yeah, these are just, the quality is so much different. I bought these at the nail supply store same grit but the quality is so different mm -hmm. so annoying Well, your application is easier. This part is, to be honest with you. Nope. Pretty much all it's finished here. After we're done hand filing, I'm gonna do a quick cuticle work and seal everything in. Gucci for the finishing. I might do some stone work, um, a little bit of gel work on top, give it a little bit more for the setup. Is it easier to use the hand, the style like that, than the? The drill is nice, but the thing is, um, if you go, if, it's really long. Mm -hmm. So like, if you're drilling, especially for me, I do my application really smooth. I would, I, I don't want to mistakenly take a metal drill bit to it and then you know dips. Uh, yeah okay. and then cause little dips into it you know that happens you guys ever had like really smooth uh application then all of a sudden out of nowhere um all of a sudden out of nowhere it's just like you drill and then all of a sudden you eat into it and you're like oh crap and then you're and then you gotta start drilling and drilling 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 making sure everything's even it actually costs more work so this, I just take care of just the base of it because it's a smooth surface, a flat surface. As long as I go in a circular motion, I won't eat into the curvature of the nail. And I'll be able to cover more surface area. And it's actually, you know, man, more manageable than a drill because a drill is, is spinning really fast. It's just you using a hand motion. And a lot of people say, does this cramp your hand up? Not really. In the beginning when I first started doing this, um, yeah, but after a while you get used to it and the way you, if you're more efficient with it. And I say, if your acrylic is really thick, then yeah, I say I recommend drill it down real quick and then do hand filing. But hand filing is definitely the way to go. If you work on, especially if you're doing extendo nails, like long, like that whole tip nail I had here. If you're doing that, any nail long, it's, it's gonna be tough for you to get the base of the nail with a, like a small drill bit. Because it's only so long. Yeah, it's only so long, so you can't really hold it. This, you're able to get full coverage. that once one hand done best the hand file what's up Jennifer I'm glad you're feeling better jeez this is gonna look fire with the top coat though I can't wait the finishes off the top coat and the, the finishers a few finishing touches we can do I love like ombres and if you ever have like if you were like ombres encapsulation and 
powder marbling are like the three designs that go so well together. Any set you can do, you can do so many different combinations. Um, if you ever wanna, you ever have issues freestyling, I'd stick to encapsulation, ombre, and all that stuff. That's the way to go when you freestyle. Because it always comes together so nicely. Any encapsulation, as long as you get the color combination right, a nice ombre. Finish here. Once I clean up my cuticle area, I'll show you guys the side profile. This is a medium, medium long. To me, personally, this is medium to medium long. It's not even a long nail. Long is a little bit, a little bit longer than this. And then after that, it's XL. This is our long. And this is a bare minimum for me. Medium, medium long is where I do, where I do my designs. Anything shorter is a little bit rough. To do no space to <laughs> squeeze everything in there. That, that, that'd be the truth. Yeah, I want you to do all this stuff. I'm like, I don't got enough room. <laughs> I mean, um, with uh, shorter nails, you can do good encapsulations and ombres, but it's just you're limited to how much stuff you can put in there and on top of it. Mm -hmm. it, starts to get to get, it, gets, it starts to get too crowded. Ooh, that looks nice. That, a little bit nice buff later. All right, here comes the spot where we seal everything in. This is my go-to bit right here. This 5-in-1 custom. You ain't ever gonna see a bit like that. This is what I, relax. This is when I seal the cuticles in, make sure the cuticles are nice and flush. Um, now, make the nails last. Now I don't have to worry about this area. I don't have to worry about the base of the nail because I already did that with hand filing. That's how we're blending it in and I'm good to go. Gives me more time to focus on what's important, which is the cuticles. I want to flush these nice and flush. Get my structure down. Just like that. This is a sharp bit, so I'm able to get right between the cuticle and the acrylic. And what that does is it gives me a nice, clean, flush cuticle area where when the nail grows out, more likely it should be, it won't lift as much. So it's nice to seal then. Now you have any excess protruding from the nail. Yes, it's gonna grow out a couple of days and it's gonna have a little bit of a excess there and it's going to definitely lift. So you want to limit it as much as possible with the drilling of the cuticles. A lot of nail tests have issues with lifting. I think that's like the number one, the number one issue. Every nail tech start in this industry is my nails are lifting after a week, after a couple of days. What am I doing wrong? What kind of primer should I use? What, you know, yes, primer, dehydrator, whatever, bonder. All that helps you with your um, 
your adhesion. But the main thing is this right here, guys. You, the nail tech. This technique, be able to work around the cuticle area, nice and flush. That will seal the deal for you, okay? So before you go throw money around and products, this could be a simple fix for you. More than likely, when your cuticle work is better, your, you can blow, your nose your adhesion is better. And I can I'll promise you that. Looks so clean and sharp. <laughs> Thank you, Edgar. This is why all the nail slabs are bought some chisel acrylic. Nice. I need to go actually get some chisel acrylic for the shop. They're running out. Which supply store did you go to? In Orlando. I know you live in Orlando. Those kids. <laughs> hey, Andrea, how are you? I ordered a drill set this morning, tired of hand filing. Um, I hand file, you know, only to an extent. There's not, there's some things you can't do with a hand file like this. There's no way. You're gonna get into this cuticle area with a hand filer, you know? And no one's gonna be, you know, as much as I wanna lay perfect or quick every time, come on, we're not, it's not, it's not possible. It is, but like I'm saying, like sometimes we're just a little bit off. So we need the assistance of these machines, yes. I mean, there are some days when I literally just like amazing acrylic or I'm like having the perfect day and yes, but you know, I still gotta go through this, the process of sealing everything and making sure everything is nice and clean. What's up, Luis from UK? How are you guys doing out there? Thank you for watching. UK is actually becoming more and more big with acrylics now. Before it's all about building gel for them, European nations, but there's starting to be more and more into acrylic. It's just awesome. finish with one hand here yes it is I know you could you'll be able to cut you can possibly cut your client doing this I know and I still cut clients till this day so if you cut a client it's not the end of the world it's called an accident <laughs> sanitize your tools clean up the wound you know apologize profusely <laughs> and move on because we're all human we make mistakes Okay. When you get traumatized by it, it's gonna really affect how you work next time, okay? Don't be traumatized by it. That's one of the dangers of using a sharp bit going on the cuticle, but once you get the technique down and it's just, you just breeze through it. I'm gonna clean it underneath. I reckon using a sanding band if you're not comfortable with using a sharp bit. Sanding band will actually limit your ability to cut the client or remove too much excess stuff on there. I didn't have too much stuff on here, so not too bad. There we go, guys. The first hand is finished. I gotta do a nice buffing and I'm finished with that hand.
It's actually my, the most satisfying part of the nails for me is the cuticle work. A nice clean cuticle just makes my day. I actually push the limits. Sometimes I'm like, I get really into there. You kind of just, you kind of feel your way through this. A lot of people ask me, oh, how do you know before you get to the natural nails? Oh, you know. You'll know when you're drilling into a, you'll, you'll know when you're drilling into acrylic and you're not, when you're drilling into natural nails. You, it's, it's hard to explain. You kind of feel it. You know, you, you've done it enough where you kind of feel like, okay, I've, I've got, I'm getting really close to the natural nails. I'm going to ease off. Now, it's one of those like things where it's just, it's, you just got to feel it. I can't explain it. I can't show it. But I know that the more you work, the more you'll feel it. Yes, in the beginning, you'll be, you're putting too much pressure down and you'll, you'll kind of create that little ring. But you'll get you have the hang of it over time, okay? Well, I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, they'll let you know. You'll feel, they'll feel hot, or they'll feel sensitive. And also, when you, you when you see the when you do the soak off, you see the, like a, a deep ring, and then you know that you went too far in the cuticle area. But careful with that. fingers left. Make sure you get a nice blend, okay guys? This does like an all in round bit. This is that I can use it for the drilling, cuticle work. That's why it's five and one works pretty much every possible way you want it to work. And it's tense. I'm trying to relax. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're failing at trying. Hmm? You're failing at it. Oh, Lord. I'm, so I'm like forcing life. myself. I'm just like, no, I'm gonna break your finger. But I only got two fingers left, so we're good. No, but there's more stressful on your hands than mine. It is, and you know it. You're an L tech, so. No, I'll be popping people's fingers. <laughs> <laughs> relax. Relax, why don't you? Okay, so I'm gonna finish up with the thumb, give it a nice buff, and I'm gonna do the design on top. A few little things I wanna add on top to give it, you know, more fall-like, fall-like features. No, because you're trying. <laughs> you're thinking about it. Doing this down real quick. Just since I have it here. My rule of thumb is with Apex. A lot of you guys that always think about Apex is based off length. Also based off how big your how wide your your client's is, um nail bed is also. How much nail bed you have. Probably never thought about that, huh? Based on where your client's nail bed is, where the free edge is. That should reflect your apex. You can't create the same apex on every nail. That's not possible. Not every client has the same type of nail base and length. Okay, I'm gonna finish off a little bit of the shape real quick. 
make sure everything's nice and crisp. But sometimes change of thickness can also change the shape. So I'm gonna make sure this free edge is nice and even. Yes. Not too much now. We don't want to change the length. We're just trying to make this nice and crisp. Give it a nice buff. And we got a buff because we have the This part's actually very satisfying too. Yes. Come together. Okay, wash your hands. The sink right there. Oh, okay. in the park. Yeah, water's fine. Get my dust collector over there. My handy dandy dust collector. There is washable or reusable dust collector. Hey Marisol, how are you? You know what? For you know, I think my next class in Florida, I might do it in South Florida. I think so, because uh, yeah, I think I might do it in South Florida. Cause I already did three Orlando classes. I might do it in South Florida. I should do a matted and do this shiny on top. Nah.
Go ahead. No, it's here. It's on this table. It's, is it, it's a not polished bag over here. No, 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 no. That's not that. It's like a little clear bag of oh, okay. little gems. I just used it the other day. Right here. There it is. So I'm going to use my gem on right here. This is important. This is for rhinestones and also... I'm going to use a little cash tray. I ain't about not to waste about to waste this stuff. Give myself a brush. Any brush. Brush on this gem on. Just a nice coat. Not too much, just enough. A nice generous even layer. I see the biggest mistake people that do this. They put too much on there and it protrudes and it gets stuck on stuff. You need just enough to keep on there. You see how it takes on that glitter and also that. That's what I'm talking about. I almost have half mine to do this too, but nah. I'm not gonna leave that alone. Go ahead, go ahead and cure. I don't want to do too much here. I'm just gonna do this this general area. Whatever you put this glue on, that's where it's gonna stick on to, okay? And I kinda light you see I, mean? I kinda lightly press them into it so half of the bead is in submerging the product. I don't want to get onto the free edge too much on the side walls because it's gonna just get caught and stuff. People really downplay on this catch tray. I'm telling you, man, it's, it, it's, it saves so much product. A lot of you guys have a bunch of it just sitting on your table from pouring all over the place. I'm like, wow. But I'm gonna lightly tap it. That is, is it kind of submerges it into the gem, gem glue so that it's not sticking out. But sometimes when these things hit onto the glue, it just, um, it kind of gets like on top of it. Not, you want half of it to be submerged in there, so it actually secures it better. You still get the texture, but actually it'll last longer. This design is a wear and tear design. It means that it's gonna wear and tear, so it's gonna, you know, not, it's not supposed to last forever, but. Then we're gonna get a nice top coat. It's my no wipe top coat, it's pretty good. Money back guarantee. You only need a thin layer of this. It's a medium, medium setting top coat. It means medium. It won't go to the corners, to the edges. 
and make your lose your shape. A lot of top coat you see that's very thin, it does that. This doesn't. I think I'm gonna do half matted, half shiny for this one. That looks really good. This is our glitter ombre. That looks great, huh? I'm gonna do this other half matted. I'm not gonna put the top coat over the gems, okay? If you put the top coat over this gems, it's gonna fill in all those crevices and it's gonna lose the textured effect that you're looking for. A lot of people want to put a lot of top coat on. You don't need a lot of top coat. The thinner your top coat, the better it is, actually. The thinner, the better. Because it cures better, and also it um, it won't be too thick, and it won't, you won't lose your shape. That's why I like a top coat that's very nice and thick. Not thick, but medium consistency. And there you go, just a nice fall color design, encapsulation, ombres, add a little bit of stone, it doesn't have to be full bling, but it still has that stone look with my powder marbling. I love doing that with the powder marble. Before I forget, I'm gonna mat the other end. I still gotta mat it. Mat the other side of this to protect it from getting stained. And my mat taco is actually pretty damn good too. I could have just matted everything and just did you know clear over the mat, but what that does is switch. What that does is um it creates too many layers. So it, make, it will make my nails too thick, so that's, that's why I try to do it like this. All you gotta do is gotta be very careful with your brush and you should be able to get nice layers on this. See? It's cute. You can switch. I'm gonna give it two full rotation of, of uh, curing before I go back and I'll show you guys some cuticle. Zoom in. That's it. This gem glue is actually good for putting on gems also. Um, gives you time to move the gems around before you cure it. A lot of people use glue base. I don't really use a glue base because I think using a glue base uh, gem sealer, actually, uh, well, you have to really be precise with that because once it's on there, it's gonna glue on there. So I like to be able to move and fix my stuff. Also returning some of these into the, oh shit. I need to be a little bit. Yeah, I need a little bit better. I need to move this into a container. That's what I need to do. Okay, switch. Let's give her some cuticle oil and let's take a look at the final product. This is just a nice impromptu set. Where's my cuticle pen? So a few things, if you're new and you don't, you don't think you sealed your cuticle in good enough yet, once you put the cuticle oil on, I really suggest you guys to um, wipe it off because you don't want oil to be stuck in there 
and get into this corner and X. once it's on just rub it onto your the cuticle area and you know it's nice and don't want to be dry you don't need cuticle oil slop on there because this it sits there by the cuticle oil if there's any like little bit of like stuff that maybe you didn't get clean out sealed in what's going to happen is it's going to actually eat into it it's going to seep into it okay and there we go final final look see that will not lift hopefully nice and clean cuticles see how it's right before that natural nail you see the natural nail swirling up under there because i use a sharp bit it's not going to show too much of an indent so it's just a nice little fall inspo set a little bit 